Finally, uh, a questioner says, what's the ruling on male and female circumcision? Now, female circumcision, we've been through this, and we've said that this is not mandatory in Islam. And it's not similar to FGM, uh, a female genital mutilation, because this is uh, from the Pharaoh's era, and it has no relation to Islam. It deprives a woman from enjoying her natural needs regarding intimacy. So this is totally separate and different from Islamic circumcision. Nevertheless, it is not mandatory to have female circumcision. As for the male, it is mandatory to have it. And this is part of Sunan al-Fitrah. This is part of the Sunan of nature. So all prophets had this done. Prophet Ibrahim was circumcised when he was 80 years of age. He circumcised himself with an ax. And this is mandatory because it purifies a person when he answers the call of nature and there is no um, remaining of urine drops that may impact his prayer. Nevertheless, this should not deter or prevent a person from accepting Islam. Unfortunately and unwisely, when a Christian comes to embrace Islam and he's very interested in it, those who call him to Islam out of ignorance would say, oh, but you have to be circumcised. And this may deter and prevent this person from accepting Islam. And this is wrong. This is a trivial issue compared to his Islam. Let him accept Islam. And if he's afraid that he might bleed or that this might impact his health or endanger his safety, if a doctor says he's too old for it, in this case, there's no problem in him not being circumcised. But this should not be an obstacle between him and accepting Islam, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.